Hey guys, this is Moppet Dude from Party Down South too. Thanks for listening to Bring Me Your Torch with Jesse and Elaine. Welcome to another episode of Bring Me Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. Let's tell everybody, where do you find us? You find us at www.bringmeyourtorch.com. But where else can you find us? Facebook.com slash bringmeyourtorch or Twitter.com slash bringmeyourtorch without the H. No H. You can find us on Stitcher. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Blueberry. You can find us on YouTube. Google Bring Me Your Torch. <laughs> you will find everything you need to know about us. But now, on to our special guest. On the phone, we have a guest from the new season of MTV's The Real World also known as Go Big or Go Home. Her MTV bio says that she's known for her notable eyebrows, impressive derriere, and loud, unpredictable personality. And after the first couple episodes, she's now famous for her self-described golden, well, you know <laughs> um, <laughs> Kayla, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and before we uh, get into everything, I just want to thank you so much for reaching out to us. You've been so friendly right off the bat. You were our preseason number one pick, and you haven't disappointed yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I listened to your past two podcasts, and I was like, yay, they love me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Definitely the favorite. Good. Well, I'm happy that I haven't let you guys down. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't screw up. You still <laughs> <don't>. <laughs> I, I know. It's only episode two. We have a lot more to go. Well, I think the key for us, we're like, we have to get a hold of these guys before they're famous and they get, you know, get the big head and they have a thousand <laughs> followers. So we, I saw you guys had like, you know, 500 followers. I'm like, now's the time to pounce on Only 500? <laughs> well, they, well, it's gone up since. This is, this is like maybe a month ago before the show had premiered. <laughs> yeah, you guys added me early. And I was like, I yeah. want to do this podcast. They're awesome. So Yay. now here I am. <laughs> Just remember, no matter what happens, we were we were there from the beginning. <laughs> you were. You definitely were. Um, but before we go into the real world, I want to find out a little bit more about you, you know, find out what makes Kayla tick. What's your background? What, what, what was life like before you were all of a sudden on MTV? You know, my life was weird right before MTV because I had just graduated from college and I was just like, I, I have a degree in journalism and I'm not entirely ready to... I guess be serious about life and have the boring old nine to five type thing. So I was in a limbo kind of, and I was bartending and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then all of a sudden I just randomly one day stumbled across the fact that they were casting for the real world. And I was like, you know, this is a shot in the dark. What are the chances I'm going to make it? Probably slim to none, but I'm going to try anyway. I've been watching since I was young. So, um, I filled out an application, and a couple months later, there I was in Vegas. So, I mean, life was pretty boring before all of that, honestly. <laughs> that's pretty awesome how that all worked out. I think everything happens for a reason, so that's oh, my philosophy. Oh, it definitely does. It worked out so perfectly, too, because I had just quit a job that I hated. I was jobless completely. I My lease for my apartment was ending, and then I got casted. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is perfect timing. Like, it just worked out. It was like puzzle pieces coming together. It was so strange. That is really weird. It's like, I need a place to live. I need to be in the <laughs> real world house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It worked out so seamlessly. Well, I've always wondered about the audition process. I just auditioned for Big Brother this past weekend. Let's keep our fingers crossed for that. But how did you get on the real world in terms of, like, what was the process like? Did you have to submit a video or was it just a paper form? Um, mine was a little bit different. Side note, if you get on Big Brother, I'm going to be really jealous of you because I'm a huge <laughs> Big Brother fan. <laughs> um, and now my chances of ever being on Big Brother are completely squashed because I know you <laughs> won't let me. But, do, you, um, do you have a favorite contestant from Big Brother, by the way? Ooh, Big Brother favorite contestant. I'm a Dr. Will guy all the way. Are you? I am. I love the guy. You know, I hate Rachel, but I love Rachel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I literally, I, you know I what it. I mean? I just, she's so annoying, but she never ceases to entertain me. And I guess I probably am the same character on the real world for a lot of people, which is fine with me. <laughs> so, um, how did I make it on the show? I, I just, it was all different for me than it is for normal people, I think, because every one of us had a different casting process. Um, most people went to open casting calls and things like that, but I actually never met with anybody in real life until like 
two weeks before I made the show. Um, so all of mine was just virtual. I oh, wow. submitted, yeah, I submitted an application online and then that was like a five minute process. <laughs> and then the next one was like a five hour, like long questionnaire thing. So it was 50 questions long. And then, um, after that I got pushed on and everything was through Skype. They talked to me and my parents and all of my friends, oh, my wow. boyfriends, all of that stuff. And then. I did that for a while, and then they flew me out to L.A., and then from there, I think two weeks later, I was in Vegas. <laughs> and, you, and you had mentioned that, right, that you broke up with a boyfriend, so you would go on the show single and not have to worry about that nonsense? Yeah, uh, I was – bad Kayla, bad Kayla. I didn't tell <laughs> him – I didn't tell him that I was going through the casting process at all because I knew that he wouldn't approve, and I didn't want his, I guess, opinions to sway me in any direction of whether I wanted to be on the show or not. And I figured if I make the show, I'll break up with him and do that. And if I don't make the show, then he'll never know. So, uh, I knew that I was getting my way either way. (laughs) Um, so I ended up making it, which I mean, honestly, I didn't think I would. And, uh, like, I think a day or two before I left, I had to be like, hey, by the way, I made it on the real world and I have to go. I wasn't, <laughs> Peace I out. I wasn't very happy about it. It was it was pretty bad. It was really bad. But I had to do what I had to do. Are you guys still in touch? Hell no. He ended up getting back with his ex-girlfriend while I was on the show. So Ew. I was Yeah, I know. Oh, I was really you can't happy. blame him. Come on. <laughs> Well, yeah, but it kind of solidified the fact that I am completely happy with the decision that I made about leaving and going and leaving him behind. He made that <laughs> very clear when I was gone, so whatever. Yeah, well, you know, everything, like I said, everything happens for a reason. You're much better off without him. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> now, you had, you had mentioned you were a fan of the show when you were a little kid. Now, I'm showing my age here, <laughs> and I, I can't believe I remember when the first season came out. Um, I think I was like in first grade or something, <laughs> and I, well, it, was, it, was, it was so weird back then. It shows how much things have changed in the past, you know, a few decades. That I remember seeing Norman on the first season, going, "Wow, someone who's gay is on TV." You didn't see that, and then in the third season, like, "Oh my God, someone is HIV positive." You just don't see that on TV. So you've really seen a lot of things change through the real world. And again, I don't want to date myself, but is it weird that some of this stuff happened probably before you were born or <laughs> when you were just a little kid? Oh, absolutely. Um... You know, I grew up in a very liberal family, um, so I know it sounds weird, but I've always sat down every Wednesday or Thursday and watched it with my dad. Uh, it's so strange to say, but it's true. <laughs> um, so it was kind of like a weird family thing that we did. <laughs> and I remember watching back when I was probably 14, 15, sitting down and watching the season. So I have a different experience than all the other cast members because they never watched the show. None of them. Not at all. Not even one. Really? So I was, yeah, none of them. So I was the only fan. So going in for me, I had a much different perspective on the whole situation. And my experience was a lot different because I knew how big of an opportunity it was. Yeah. How, like, I'm kind of a, I don't know, part of a huge historical reality television show that really touched on uh, important topics throughout the past almost 30 years. Yeah. And I think that the experience meant a lot more to me than it did to them because I knew that. Well, you definitely shook things up, even the first two episodes. We love we yeah. watching you. I think my character was much... <sighs> I I don't want to say I played it up for the cameras because I'm crazy in real life, but I knew what it was like to be, you know, as a viewer, what they want, you know, like you want to see the crazy person. You want people to go nuts. And I did that and I was okay with it because it's kind of how I am in real life. So I didn't shy away from the cameras because I knew I didn't have to. Definitely. But once you got on the show, were you expecting something crazy to happen? Because real world for a long time was kind of just a standard reality show. But then we see explosion and then skeletons. Were you afraid your ex was going to come on? (laughs) Oh, absolutely. I mean, I knew that the majority of my exes would say no. So I wasn't that scared of that. But they did ask me a lot about um, like past roommates that I had. 
asked, like, do you have problems with them? Like, or do you have any enemies? And Fishing they asked things. me a lot about enemies and things like that. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to get in the house and they're going to bring in every girl that I've ever needed in my life. This is going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> so I was definitely nervous. And when he said go big or go home, I was like, oh, thank God. This is right up my alley. Well, they definitely really had you go big right off the bat, but before you got into the jumping out of the hot air balloon thing, did you have a chance to really size up your roommates before anything happened? I mean, you're in the middle of the desert and there's a bunch of balloons you know, hanging up there and you're going to jump out, but did you – I mean, I, I think they talked a little bit about uh, what some of them you know, were wearing, but what was your first you know, yeah, uh, first Dion's uh, reaction? pants? What the hell was up with that? <laughs> oh, Dion's pants. Typical Dion's pants. <laughs> Uh, to size up my roommates, I mean, kind of, but you would think that right off the bat, I would have been like, oh, who are these people? Like, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, the adrenaline and just the cameras and the hot air balloons kind of just took away from them a lot. I was almost in my own world. Your brain just kind of, my brain was just in so many different places that I really didn't even notice what they looked like or I didn't know their names even until yeah. probably later that day. It's just like I had so much going on. It's such a bizarre feeling right when you get dropped off. Did you ever think like, wow, screw this, I'm going home? Or were you just like, I'm going full force? Oh, no. Like I said in the first episode, I knew that right away when he said go big or go home, I had to bring it because – I grew up, my dad raised me as kind of like a little boy. I, I was raised not to have any fears. I played football the, my entire life growing up. And, and you don't know how many times I heard there's no crying in football. Uh, <laughs> I wanted pink cleats my whole life. He wouldn't let me have pink cleats. Like, I, like, grew up, you know, being tough. So I knew that if I didn't do any of these missions, I was going to go home to my parents who were going to be really upset with me. So I was just like, I'm doing it. No matter what they throw at me. Whether I, I mean, I, I just knew that I at least had to try. Uh, uh, don't, give try. don't give it away. Don't give it away. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, but. You may I mean, or may not be just, staying on the show. <laughs> right, right, right. No, but I knew that no matter what, I was going to try to do anything. Yeah, you know? definitely. We, you yeah. know, this question was going to come uh, after the last episode. We saw you hook up with Dion, who, by the way, for the past two weeks, I've been calling Dion on here, and, and no one called me on that, so that's fine. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I noticed that. It happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, oops. But, uh, you know, and the after show at the end of uh, last episode, things seemed a little icy between you guys. I know you, you, know, you can only tell us so much, but is there anything you can tell us you know, other than wait and see? Um, I mean, what I can say is that throughout the season, our relationship has its ups and downs. And I think that we still have that same relationship now because we filmed that after show much later. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll just have to see how things progress. But well, That was actually my other question. When, when do they actually film those after shows? We, I think I got back two or three weeks ago. So it was much later. It had been, you know, a couple of months since the show had done had been done, and then they called us back, and we were in LA for four days. So all of those were shot within a couple of days. You could just change outfits. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I really always wondered. That, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at, I remember at the end of uh, one of the ones in the challenge last season, I thought Abe was going to kill somebody. I'm like, oh God, God are, are these are these uh, emotions raw when it's happening? So it's, it's nice to know that they all kind of go on. Uh, you know, after the fact. Oh, yeah, well, much after the fact. So everything that you saw is everything, you know, feelings had been, I guess, setting in for months by the time we did those. <laughs> yeah, well, also on the after show, you seem to imply that you weren't the only one that was hooking up with Dion. We see Sabrina, um, you know, had a little thing for him. Um, can you tell us anything else about that? Although you did say never today, you texted <laughs> or you tweeted us and said never. never. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, with the whole Sabrina and Dion thing, I'm going to be totally honest about it. I, like I said, the first, I think, week or two, I was kind of just in my own world. Like, I had so much going on and the cameras and it was a new environment and I was excited. Yeah. And she never directly talked to me about Dion because. I think that she knew that we kind of had something going on. So I never heard anything directly from her and everyone kind of like kept it on the hush hush around me. So I really just, I, I just didn't notice 
really. So when you see me leaning over Sabrina to kiss Keon, it looks weird to you guys because obviously as a viewer, you see everything that's going on. But to me, I had no idea. I mean, I knew that she kind of had a crush on him and I knew that they had a little flirty thing, but I didn't know the extent of it until I saw that episode. And I was like, oh shit, I kind of look like an asshole. But <laughs> Yeah, definitely. What I are mean, your thoughts on on him saying to CJ that his girlfriend or his ex-girlfriend was hotter than Sabrina or any other girl for that matter. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that my best reply to this is that beauty comes from within. And if you're a shitty person, then totally. I don't think that you're attractive. Totally. So that's the best way to put it for me. Well said. That's a good yeah. attitude to have. Yep. Um, and that's, that's where I stand on that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, from the previews for this upcoming season, you know, it, to me at least, Jenna seems like she's the most controversial, quote unquote, I guess I would say, roommate in the season. You, know, you guys, you've yelled at each other, you've made out with each other, you know, it's just like a normal night in the real world house. But do you think she came in, I don't know, a little naive? And, and do we see her grow and, and change a little bit as she moves out? Yeah, I was actually, uh, when I was listening to your podcast that you did last week and you were talking about how she used the word colored, um, she actually texted me a couple weeks ago and she thought that the word colored was the politically correct way to address, you know, the other race. And I'm not trying to like put her on blast like that, but I'm yeah. using that example so that you guys know that she just doesn't know any better. And yeah. it's very much, she's a product of how her parents raised her. And I know that that's obviously no excuse and I'm not standing up for the things that she said or did at all. She's wrong, 100%, but it's just lack of education. And I guess that's the only thing that I can say about it. It's sad, and, um, you know, we all try and help her learn, but there's only so much that you can do. And, and honestly, I think that actually comes through, and that's why I didn't – Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I didn't dislike her because I know she's not doing this out of a place of – hatred or anything it's just that she didn't know and right. that's what's great about the real world that you come to this place people from different backgrounds and you learn things that you may ne never have learned otherwise absolutely and it's sad you know because like i said i'm 100 percent not standing up for her at all i know everything she said was wrong and i don't agree with anything that she said but she's getting a lot of hate on social media for it which you know rightfully i understand but i almost think that people who are hating her are being worse people than she was being on the show so them coming at her in a sense of you know being hateful towards her is worse than what she said because she didn't do that out of hate she did it out of ignorance and everyone who's coming at her is doing that from a place of hate and i think that it's really sad the way that like society is treating her it's, yeah I, I really agree you know, with you there it's definitely it's, we come from a society these days who loves to be outraged. And <laughs> a lot are. of times oh, yes. when you have your outrage, you become a complete monster in return. Like you, you become what you're yelling the at someone for doing, and it's right. so stupid. Isn't that so crazy? I know I've seen that so much in the past couple of weeks, and that's why I started doing my mean tweet segment because all you can do is like laugh about it um, because it's almost funny. It's like these people are yelling at you over something that's just like so crazy. Like ugh, I don't even – it's – really been eye-opening for me and people are crazy to say the least that's why i really liked cj in the first episode or two she was just really tolerant really patient yeah yeah she was and yeah she is a very tolerant and patient person and we all knew at the time that you know jenna needed help and she that's what we tried to show her and cj did a really good job of that for sure if you talk to Jenna, let her know there's no hatred for from us coming at her. We like. Oh, her. definitely. Yeah, I'll let her. <laughs> Switching gears a little bit. Now that you finished filming the season, do you still hang out with anyone like Jenna or Sabrina? Yeah, Sabrina and I actually just got back from Cabo like last week. Uh, we were there for an entire week hosting spring break through a company called nice. College. Shout out to them. They're awesome. Um, and I talked to Chris a couple times a week. I just got off the phone with him, and we talked yesterday for, like, two hours, I think. Um, oh, wow. But I'm definitely closest to them, too. Jenna and I text here and there about certain things. We kind of go through the same, you know, <laughs> hate on social media, so we have that in common yeah. now. But aside from that, not so much anyone else. Maybe a text here and there, but I'm definitely closer to certain people than others. 
Oh, yeah. well, we see that throughout the season, just your relationship <laughs> grow with, with them. Oh, oh, for sure. You'll see the cliques they form and people become best friends and other people hate each other. And it's a typical real world season. You know, there's always the cliques. So. Uh, have you met any of the other um, real world legends like Johnny Bananas? Yeah, I met Johnny Bananas a couple weeks ago while I was in L.A. for a TV press conference. It was pretty cool to meet him because, you know, I've been, like I said, watching forever. So I was fangirling a little bit. But <laughs> oh, I, I, I need to ask you a big favor, mm -hmm. and, and I'm hoping it's not too late. Okay. Whatever, whatever you do, don't hook up with Tony from Skeleton. That's the worst. <laughs> oh, my God, never. I will not. Seems like I promise. Seems I don't want to, you know, put him on blast, but he seems like such a horrible person. <laughs> he's no, kind of he's hot as hell. <laughs> he's hot, but I've, yep, I've heard some things. Definitely heard some things. <laughs> it's that confidence that we love, doesn't it? Oh, God. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we were just mentioning uh, CJ uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, you know, one of the most powerful scenes that we've seen so far was really when she described her parents and what happened. When you think about the real world, I think a lot of times we think of like alcohol and sex and partying, but there was nothing more real than what we saw that episode. What was it like being there in that moment? I was just taken back, I think. I didn't know what to say or how to react because, you know, growing up in West Palm Beach, Florida, I found myself with people who are very similar to me. Um, you know, I come from a good home. I lived in a good neighborhood my whole life, went to good schools. So when I went into the real world and met these six strangers who had lives that were completely different than mine, especially CJ's, it was just so eye-opening, I guess you could say, because I've never met anyone who had to go through the struggles that they did. And when I was there listening to her story, I just, I don't want to say I was, you know, thankful for my life because it seems really selfish while someone's talking about their parents dying, but I was. I was thankful for my life and I was super, super sorry for the things that she had been through. And it really just, I guess, it, I guess that moment really changed my life and the way that I look at everything that goes on around me because, you know, you take things for granted and mm -hmm. her story is just so intense. Well, well said. I, I really appreciate how everyone was so in tune and really listening to her when she was talking about her parents. And it really, I feel like it touched everybody in the house. Oh, it did. We had a lot of talks like that with CJ. We had a lot, a lot of talks like that with everybody where everyone kind of sat and listened. I mean, we didn't have a TV. We didn't have anything else to do. So sitting and talking about our lives was what we did every night. And her stories were always the most powerful. So it, it, and it helps that she's really good at talking. Like her stories, the way that she conveys herself is just so captivating. And I'm sitting there like, oh shit, I feel like I'm there. Like it was always yeah. so intense with her. Wow. Well, we also know that reality TV isn't always that real. But do you think you got a fair edit this season so far? Yeah, I do, actually. And I know that everyone probably like, oh, she's crazy or she whatever. No, I don't no, even no. care. You know, um, but I was really, really scared when I left the show, like super, super scared about the edits and how they would make me look and the sequence of events. Um, and of course, you know, you don't see everything. You don't see how things play out. Like when I yelled at Jenna in that second episode, of course it kind of had to do with the fact that she was annoying me that morning, but really it had to do with the fact that it was the straw that broke the camel's back and I had been pissed at her all week and kind of looking for a reason to lash out on her. So people are uh, pissed off at me online for yelling at her, but really it was just, I hated her up. already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so um, of course, you guys don't see it all, and that kind of sucks, but for my story and everything that's happened so far, yeah, I think the edit is pretty fair as far as I've seen, and I've seen a couple more episodes later on in the season, and they're fair also, so I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Oh, yeah. Have your parents said anything about the way you've acted, or are they just like, oh, well, you know, that's... You know, that's, um, that's our girl. <laughs> yeah, like I said, my parents are super liberal. And when I went oh, on good. the show, um, I call, I remember I had one conversation with my mom and dad about everything. And um, they were just kind of like, you know, you're 23 years old, and this is an experience of a lifetime. 
and we don't want you to have to worry about what we think because no matter what you do there, we're still going to love you when you come home. Like, God, I love your parents. And, and yeah, they're like, and that's all that matters. Like if everyone else in the world hates you, we're still going to love you no matter Aww. what you do there. So have a good time. Don't worry about us and make decisions as you think you should, you know, and anything that you're doing there is what every 23 year old is doing. So Very don't worry true. about it. It's fun. So, um, you know, they've seen the episodes and I think, you know, of course it's awkward, but they're totally fine with it. They're just like, whatever, that's Kayla. I don't think And you I... shouldn't be you shouldn't be judged because if you had the audio of uh what Elaine and I do to, to each other when <laughs> and we don't put on the podcast, we're always yelling at each other too, but we love each other. So you know, in the end it all comes around. Yeah. It's whatever. So and I'm you... not I'm not upset about any decisions that I made while I was there. Don't so definitely don't be. Yeah. Life's too short. Uh you know, you mentioned a, l- a little while ago. Uh, some of what you're getting online. I think anybody who finds any kind of fame, whether it's you know big, small, or in between, the first thing they learn is that the internet is just the worst. It's just filled with some of the worst people out there. <laughs> Do you have any horror stories from just people being insanely mean to you, or what? Are yeah. they have they been nice? Yeah. yeah, yeah. My worst one so far. Uh, this happened a couple of days ago. Was this kid? He wrote underneath one of my pictures. It's still there if you guys want to read it. It's crazy long. And it's underneath the, a bathing suit picture that I posted, I think, right after I got back from Cabo. And he wrote, I'm not kidding you, it's probably 500 words about just how much of a mm, tramp, I guess is a good word, uh, I am. But, of course, he used much meaner terms. <laughs> and he just went on and on and on. And it was vulgar. I kept it up because it was so crazy. Like, it was the craziest thing I've ever read. And then, of course, my fans kind of, like, had my back. And then a uh, couple comments down, he kind of, like, switched gears and then, like, wanted to be my friend. Yeah. And it was so weird. And then I blocked him, and he wrote me on Twitter and was like, please don't block me. And I'm like, no, you're not. Oh Go God. away. And oh he wrote me back again, and he was like, I said I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, you're not. Like, this kid said the meanest things that anyone's ever said to me in my entire life and then tried to be my friend. And I was like, what in the world? People are crazy. He's like in his basement with the lights off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's exactly what it was. It was so yeah. vulgar and disgusting. It was crazy. He, he probably thought it was 2005 and he just read the game and thought if he like give you know neg you and suddenly yeah. you'd want him or something. <laughs> yeah, it was so yeah. weird. <laughs> well, you know, and you and you touched on this a little earlier too. That you know, when I was in college, we'd have people from the real world or some other shows come to our campus or we'd go out to bars and you get paid kind of hang out with the fans. You just got to do that, right? That's a pretty cool gig. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's really cool. I haven't done much yet. Um, Sabrina and I did the whole Cabo thing, which was awesome. Um, and then I have some things lined up for a couple clubs in Miami, which will be cool. And who knows? I don't know what the future is going to bring. I don't think they do as many club appearances as you would think anymore. Um, but I'm going to try my best, see what I can you know, get the, out of it. The market's saturated these days. You know, when it first started, there were, weren't so many, uh, reality shows. Now everybody and their mother has a reality show. Exactly. And with the rise of like social media, they're able to promote in other ways. They don't need, you know, reality stars to be there as much anymore to bring people in, but we'll see. I'm trying my best. I'm trying to ride, well, ride this wave as long as I can. So definitely. Well, I'm having my bachelorette party in Austin here in May. You should come down. Jesse's coming down from Connecticut. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'll be there. Let's do it. Party time. <laughs> I'm serious. That would be so much fun. I've never been to Texas. You've never been to Austin? Oh my God. It's crazy. No. We just had South by Southwest. Oh my gosh. I'm flying oh. down Cinco de Mayo. We'll see you there. <laughs> Ooh, that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we go, there's one major question we have to ask you. Okay. Are we ever going to see you on the greatest show in the history of mankind, The Challenge? <laughs> God, I hope so. <laughs> I'm praying that I get a call, but, I mean, that's not up to me. They, The producers know that I'm interested, so Good. we'll see what happens. <laughs> We're going to push it. We'll push it to M- MTV. We'll tweet them out. <laughs> Hell, yeah. We'll see what happens. I mean, like I said, I'm just sitting here patiently waiting for the phone call, so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Well, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks so much for coming on our show. And we're looking forward to the rest of the season and watching oh, all your cool. shenanigans. <laughs> oh, yeah. So many more to come. Just wait. Oh, uh-huh. gosh. <laughs> 
Team Kayla all the way. Hashtag Team Kayla. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you guys so <laughs> much for having me. It was so much fun. 